Hi, welcome. I'm Joe Pasquale, and this is a submission for a course project. The project, the course is Managing Machine Learning Projects, and that's on Coursera. Touch on briefly here on project guidelines. The goal here is to identify a problem and come up with an opportunity for a machine learning based solution. Uh, we'll look at defining that problem in further detail. We'll define what success looks like. We'll look at other factors that might be relevant to solving the problem. Uh, we'll come up with the solution concept um, and its design, how we can validate that solution. Um, we'll decide um, some principles around the machine learning system itself. And we'll talk about some risks once it's deployed into production. So my opportunity is around a company, we'll just call it Company X, who's a real estate investor and they buy single family homes, they renovate them so they can be leased to families um, who want to live in an affordable, better quality of life uh, home within a good school district. So Company X already has a machine learning algorithm that can price the home, but they haven't extended this to the repair estimate. Currently they're using a heuristic uh, instead, instead, so they're using like an a, um, average repairs. When actual repairs are completed, it's noted that in 50% of the home acquisitions, Company X is overpaying for the home, primarily from getting this repair estimate wrong. So we have a problem here, and can machine learning solve it? Well, I think yes. The heuristic benchmark that they're using is clearly not performing. And instead, we can use a regression-based algo to better predict repair estimates. Um, we can use data and photos from inspections, for example, and we could create a, a predict a bespoke repair value um, for each home, um, acknowledging that location and severity of repairs to materials, labour and vendors is highly correlated to predict, predicting a better repair estimate. Uh, does the customer care? Well, in this instance, the customer is Company X, and yes, they do care because they're losing money on real estate acquisitions. That's impacting their growth. If the trend continues, the company's going to have to look at layoffs maybe increasing rent charges to their existing tenants and ultimately this is going to risk damaging that the company's reputation. So let's just understand the problem a little bit further. So the target user here, which will also be my executive sponsor, is going to be the head of acquisition operations. And his big problem is that the company, company X is overpaying on 50% of its home acquisitions primarily because they're getting their repair estimates wrong. Why does it matter? Uh, company X is losing money on real estate deals, it's not able to grow and risk layoffs and rent increases, which, it'll, which will damage its reputation. Current state, Company X is using heuristic average repair value as its estimate. So defining success. So the expected impact here is um, we reduce losses on home purchase acquisitions. So a good outcome metric here for our head of acquisition operations is reducing losses from home purchase acquisitions to, let's say, under 5%. Currently, it's 50%. An output metric um, that I'm going to use on the model is uh, MAPE, and we're going to get that under 5%. percent using that because it's easy to understand in percentage terms. Um, and our constraints here are the model needs to predict repair values within 24 hours of home inspection, so we can get that offer to the seller in a reasonable amount of time. Other factors here, data is a big factor. So what, what data am I going to use for this model? Um, I'm going to need inspection data first and foremost. So that's structured checklist format data from each inspection, from an inspection app, that's going to outline the repairs needed. I'm going to need a price book, so I need up-to-date pricing data on materials and labour for, for repairs. I'm going to need that broken down by different regions and different vendors. And also I want to get some photos. We'll get this from the inspection app as well. And I want to use this to classify severity of, of repairs if available. And the model itself is going to be a bit of an ensemble. So I'm going to use classification on the photos and I'm going to use that classification as a hyperparameter in a linear regression model to calculate the total uh, repair estimate value. So let's look at the high level design here of the solution. Um, first of all, we're going to use data from both internal and third party sources. Internal sources will be our inspection data and accounts payable data. 
um, and um, I want to bring in some uh, price book data from various different vendors um, for labour and materials. We'll then construct the model into two parts, first part being a severity model. We use a photo classification algorithm um, to classify repairs into a severity matrix, and then we can use that classification as a hyperparameter in our linear regression model. Um, and that linear regression model is going to be trained on historical actual repair and inspection data. Um, it will generate a prediction on repairs as each um, inspection observation comes in. So that part will be online in production. The results of the model uh, will be stored in the data warehouse. And then we can use an existing daily ETL batch run to propagate into the end user app, Broker UI. So it doesn't need to be in real time as long as when that broker gets in in the morning, that their app is up to date with the latest um, repair values, that should be sufficient for our use case here. Uh, to validate this, um, the first thing I'd want to do is a mock-up of the broker UI. And this is really just to show the users and the executive sponsor that the workflow and user experience is really not going to change. All we're doing is replacing heuristic value for repairs with something that we hope is a little bit better. Um, then we'll get into the building of the model itself. And to do this, it's going to be very iterative. I'm going to need a lot of collaboration with, um, with the, the brokerage team, with my executive sponsor, because we're going to need to experiment with lots of different feature sets and algos and hyperparameters to really fine tune uh, this model. I'm also going to need an intentional data set. So I'm going to need their expertise in helping me define what data I need uh, for this model and how to use it. I'm going to need access to that data, and we're probably going to need to address some data quality issues as well. When we deploy, we're going to be objective about this. We're going to objectively evaluate the results of the model. Um, and if it beats the, the existing production um, model, then, then we'll put it into, we'll deploy it. Um, and when we deploy it, we're going to monitor the performance of this daily. Uh, sure, we don't have any decay from data or concept drift. Um, and we'll set a threshold also that will automatically retrain the model. We should consider some principles in the architecture of this uh, machine learning design. Uh, first and foremost, how are we going to build the model? Um, I propose we use Python with its open source machine learning libraries, um, Pandas, Scikit, Matplotlib. These are great for data preparation, modeling, visualization. They're easy to use. We have the skill sets in our in-house development team to build this from kind of from scratch. Um, it's going to be a lot cheaper than, than using AutoML. Um, and then the next consideration is, is this a cloud or edge solution? Well, this model can live in the cloud because our predicted result really only needs to be displayed in that broker's end user app. Um, within 24 hours. So we don't need to have this on the app itself. Um, this can be processed in, in, in the cloud. Offline versus online learning. I think to start off with, we can schedule retraining of this model. Um, it's just easier to implement and easier to evaluate. Um, but as the model is more mature, and we put new versions out there, we can maybe consider switching to, to online. And then the prediction itself, um, I think the prediction should be online. Um, the nature of what we're talking about here is uh, an inspection happens during the day. We want to have that prediction on estimate repairs um, as, they, as those observations come in. And then we can store those observations uh, in our data warehouse and then um, have a daily ETL to the, to the broker app. To conclude, it's always good to talk about risk and keep that very transparent. This is relevant to any model. Um, and the first thing we'd, we'd look at is training versus serving skew. This looks at the performance of um, the new predictions or new data versus what we trained it on. Um, sometimes you can see the skew because of data quality issues um, or maybe our model assumptions aren't valid anymore. Um, so we may need to develop some data validation controls at source here, primarily on that inspector app to ensure we're getting completeness and consistency. Latency, um, I don't think there's any issues here with latency um, because we've got that 24 hour window, but we can still monitor the performance of the ETL batch into that um, end user broker app. And then finally, data and concept drift. I think the concept is fairly strong once we've got our model. 
I think our risk here is data drift. Um, for example, the data we use to estimate price of materials and labour, I mean, that can change over time because of supply chain issues and inflationary factors. So we might want to consider how we update that price book data regularly um, to keep the model from drifting. And that concludes this project. Thank you for listening.